Welcome to the Lee Library and welcome to Creative Lee 21. My name is Mary Philpot. This is our 21st annual exhibit in the library and we are very happy to be back in the library this year. We have a wonderful art show and we thank the artists for their work and we are happy to share that art with you. We have many new artists this year as well as several that you will recognize from past years. And so thank you for joining us and let's go on tour of our show. Our first item is this miniature titled Sunflower Girl. Amelia Gore, a new exhibitor, created this piece from dried plant materials. Sunflower Girl has a wonderful detail from the flower petaled hair, an acorn for a head, leaf body, stick arms, and the tiniest basket which is a tiny seashell that she's holding. Our next two items are stoneware pottery pieces created by Jim Hosford. These pieces were created on a potter's wheel. The first piece is called Tranquility. The beautiful red glaze enhances the shape of this piece, which is topped with a lid and special decorative knob. The second piece is a beautiful blue vase titled Blue Crackle. This piece has a black glaze on the inside and a cobalt blue glaze under a lighter blue glaze on the outside. The reaction of the two glazes has produced quite an interesting effect on the surface of the vase. Glazes often produce some very unexpected results which are nearly impossible to duplicate. Jim teaches pottery in his studio at the Liechtenstein Center. The next two watercolors were painted by author-illustrator Michelle Cuevas. These are character studies for an unpublished novel. The top painting is my favorite of these studies. The title is Chardonnay, Zinfandel, and Merlot Mole, the Vintners. These Vintners have great expressions on their faces. The second watercolor is Quimby Quail, a very intense looking character. This is Michelle's favorite piece from these character studies. The next two pieces have been created by Carolyn Bell, a fiber artist who now lives in Lee. The fiber sculptures created with macrame techniques go far beyond the macrame that was popular a while back. The first piece, String Theory, is a three-dimensional piece that is constructed using cotton seine and half double hitches. There is no armature to give this piece shape. The second piece is titled Chance Encounter. This piece also has curving shapes and three-dimensional units, making up this striking sculpture. Carolyn's fiber sculptures have been exhibited in museums, galleries, and corporate art collections. She has taught in many places and is planning on teaching a class at the Lee Library. Eileen Smith has created two miniature scenes. The first is Cozy Hearth Fishing. Eileen has created the scene using wood, foam core, clay, and paper. These scenes are so detailed. There's a mounted fish over the decorated mantle, a fishing rod leaning against the fireplace, and animals relaxing on the rugs. Eileen Smith's second scene is Cozy Hearth Hunting. The hunting scene has a mounted deer head over the fireplace, logs alongside the fireplace, and a dog resting on the rug. Each of the scenes is very charming and so very creative. Sam Sorrentino has used wood turning techniques to make these beautiful bowls. The first is titled Waves. This bowl is made from spalted birch. Spalting is any form of wood coloration caused by fungi. In this wood, the spalting is in a series of wavy lines on the inside of the bowl. Sam Sorrentino's second bowl is titled A Big Heart and is a natural edge locust bowl with beautiful graining that gives the bowl added dimension. And when you look at it from above, you can also see the heart shape. Peter Vialli has created a hand carved and painted channel catfish. He used two pieces of 2x4 lumber glued together for carving. These fish have taste buds that are especially concentrated on the fish's barbells or whiskers surrounding the mouth. Peter has created the whiskers from nails. 
The combination of exceptional senses of taste and smell allows the channel catfish to find food in the dark, stained, or muddy waters with relative ease. Myron Hood's woodworking has a fishing theme this year. The hand-carved lures are titled Fish On. Myron added that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. And the same goes for making lures, even if you don't get to use them. These would make fishing pretty special. Myron Hood's second piece is this fish titled, I Go A-Fishing. Myron noted that the disciples fished all night and caught nothing. So we have this hand-carved fish that lives on to remind everyone of that fish that got away. Glenn Lipscomb has created this fabulous mirror using walnut, fir, and pine. These squares were cut from all the little scraps that were left from Glenn's other projects and now make up the diamond border. Glenn is really a master in his creative use of wood to create these pieces of beauty that he has shared with us throughout the years. Thad Kubis presents us with two artistic images of Dawn. The first image is Dawn at Mount Greylock, Massachusetts. The first light is just hitting the buildings below. What appears to be a simple image when you first look at it becomes more complex when you look at the different layers both below and above the sun. Thad Kubis's second piece captured a very dramatic image of Dawn at Monument Valley in Utah. Capturing the light at the exact moment produced this image with incredible colors in the sky and a dramatic landscape. This took being out in below zero temperatures and waiting throughout the night to get just the right conditions, but look what an incredible result. Belinda Twing's first piece is Nighttime on Long Sands. This photo captures a dramatic scene at the ocean with the dark sky and the movement of the water as waves are breaking. Belinda Twing's second piece is also a night scene. This photo of the Nubble at night will be, uh, will be a place recognized by many viewers. The striking effect of the light on the water brings you into the image and along with the dramatic sky, you are presented with a very tranquil scene. Sheila Heflin presents us with a very charming scene titled West Stockbridge. Sheila spent a day in West Stockbridge, which is a very lovely town, and came across this bike with a basket filled with lovely flowers. Sheila created this image, which reminds us of some of the wonderful summer memories. Cindy Mathias shares two beautiful photos with us this year. The first is titled Castaway. This single leaf with its shadows is the focal point of this dramatic photo. The dark background has layers of different shades that make the leaf all the more beautiful. Daydreaming is Cindy Mathias's second photo. This very artistic photo brings you into the perfect place for daydreaming with its waves of color and glimpses of images. The bright orange sets the tone for this photo and draws you into the space. Cindy's photos have been featured in the quality print calendars in, in 2020 and 2021. Our next photos are from Dylan Kubis. The first one represents one of Dylan's favorite subjects, classic cars. This is a 1932 Auburn. Dylan likes to focus on the details of the classic cars, and in this case, the front grille design which gives his images an artistic view of the car. Dylan Kubis' second photo is the Elma, the Elm Tree, Baldwin Hill Road, South Egremont, Mass. This spectacular tree is framed by layers of brush and fields in the foreground and the dramatic sweeping clouds across the sky in the background that bring you to the single stately elm tree, result resulting in this wonderful landscape. Another beautiful tranquil landscape is this photo by Bambi Jandro. This is titled Autumn in Maine. This scene of the beautiful fall foliage 
the calm water that points our way to the single boat in the background, and the layers of trees is the perfect fall landscape composition. Now from photography to paintings. Mary Ann Fitzhugh's first painting in this show is this watercolor titled Laurel Lake Road. Mary Ann has captured this very pleasant summer landscape ready for all to enjoy. The blue chairs are especially inviting for all to this lovely place. Another scene, this one in soft pastels on paper, was created by Alba Burns. Waiting at Sunset is the title of this painting, and this is the only pastel we have in the show this year. Alba uses the rich colors and the soft effects of the pastels to create this scene with the bench for waiting and tracks to complete her story. Colleen Surprise Jones, an artist who has been sharing her work with us for many years, has two watercolors in this show. It's always so interesting to see Colleen's work and how her work evolves as she grows as an artist. The first watercolor is titled Catastrophic, depicted by these tulips. The selection of the browns on the falling flowers gives us an image that could represent something catastrophic happening. Colleen Surprise Jones' second watercolor is called Fanatic. This lovely piece has images of a fan among the flowers to produce this painting. With few strokes, Colleen paints the images of the various flowers and foliage to create this lovely artwork. Karen Long's piece is titled Kraken. This is the first mosaic that has been part of a creatively exhibit at the library. This mosaic features a sea theme with a boat on the water and an octopus eyeing the view. The black tiles almost create a porthole for the viewer. William R. Hall Sr. painted Blasket Island, Ireland. This lovely scene was painted using acrylics. This painting is a reminder of a great trip to Ireland. When viewing this painting from a distance, the gentle waves actually seem to be breaking toward the shore. Salome Pereira Mage, a new exhibitor this year, shares one of her favorite paintings and it's titled Spaces of the Mind and it's done in oil. This painting features a wonderful corner window with a building and tree outside. It seems to be the perfect place to sit and think or dream. The next two pieces are photos printed on canvas and they are the work of Sharon Sider. The first piece shows a pair of beautiful bright orange poppies and the second is a beautiful butterfly perched on a coneflower. Sharon's favorite items to photograph are from nature as she is shown here. Sharon is another of our photographers whose work has been selected for a quality print calendar. Robert Hill's first piece in the show is this very detailed view of wild acres in Pittsfield. Bob's painting of the reflections of the trees on the water and especially the plants in the water are really impressive. He spends a great deal of time on the details and that makes the landscape come alive. From fall we go to a winter scene. This is Mary Polari's painting, Winter at the Lake, 2005. A cozy home is this in the center with a pond in the foreground and birch trees and evergreens framing the scene and swirls of snow abound. This is William Hall's second piece and it's titled A Special Place to Dream. Bill's use of vivid colors in this landscape makes it inviting, as does the tranquil water and the peacefulness of the scene. This is the place just to sit by the pond and dream. The next piece is an oil painting done by Pat Most. The title is Visitors, Dalton Farm. There in the foreground are a pair of deer, one on alert, visiting this farm. It's a scene that probably happens quite frequently on the farms in the Berkshires. Barbara Norton, a new exhibitor to Creatively this year, features birds in her paintings. The first painting done in acrylics is titled Spooky Owl. 
The piercing eyes of the owl are the first thing you notice when you walk into the gallery this year. It makes quite an impact. Blue Heron is the title of Barbara Norton's second painting, also done in acrylics. This is a very stately bird, long neck and black markings. And Barbara has included those identifying marks and posture in her painting. Sharon DeLorem, a board member of the Lee Library Association, has titled her painting, Indian Summer. This painting depicts a farm with rolling hills and cornfields and is presented as a diptych, which gives it the work even more dimension. Mary Ann Fitzhugh's second painting in this show is an oil painting called Twilight. This was inspired by a photo taken by Dave Simmons. This is a wonderful view of the town hall on the left, the congregational church, and blocks on the right. This captures that wonderful light at twilight. Pat Moe's second painting, done in oils, is a very whimsical painting. This is titled Lunch Spot. Pat has done an interesting wall effect with the plaster broken away, exposing the bricks. This gives the wall more interest and brings you in to see the critter in the corner. Pat usually has animals in her paintings for interest and warmth. Robert Hill's oil painting, End of the Trail, Hancock Shaker Village, is a view of the round barn from a different angle. The fence surrounding the area draws you into this picture. And again, Bob has given us wonderful details and some great clouds as well. Salome Pereira Mage painted this lovely small oil of birches. Birch trees have some wonderful shapes and are quite popular in paintings, including those in Creative Lee. Salome mentioned living through this year and that the birches stood still. Caroline Young presents us with an 1860s walking dress. This is a costume that was designed and built by Caroline for Shades of Stockbridge events. The details in the dress and bonnet are very impressive, and we thank Caroline for sharing this and allowing us to see at close range all the detail and work in, created in creating just one costume. Leany Angles produces paintings that are bright, bold, and make people happy. These are two of the more than 40 acrylic paintings that Leany painted during the pandemic. The first one is called Swept Away. Leany also uses layer upon layer of paint to create lots of texture. Leany Angle's second painting is The Magical Peony. We have this beautiful flower greatly enlarged to show all its beauty and structure. Leany usually paints landscapes, so this is a bit different for her, but it also shows more of her creativity. Richard J. Lerman, a new exhibitor to Creative Lee this year and also new to the area, has presented us with a painting called Behind Every Good Donut, and this is done in acrylic. This is an interesting painting with the distinctive eyes behind the donuts, leading one to wonder and interpret the expressions in many different ways, as well as initiate some interesting discussion. Thomas F. Rubino's first painting this year is Rose, done in acrylics. This bright, bold painting has great impact and presents us with a more abstract view of the artist's view of this flower. This was inspired from a trip to Spain. Mario Calori's first painting this year is Break Blast. This painting feels very explosive. Mario said that in this painting, he was hoping to communicate energy, movement, aliveness. I believe he is definitely communicating that in this work, and the use of the blues and oranges adds to those intense feelings. Lauren Long, another new exhibitor, has also been the first artist in Creatively to exhibit stained glass. This piece is Fields of Spring. Lauren says that using stained glass and mosaic as a medium has helped put some memories and images from her mind to a concrete form. Cindy Packer's first piece in this show is The Earth Laughs in Flowers. 
the title, a line from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Cindy describes her mixed media creation as made with a hand-carved stamp, printed, painted with watercolors, pen, and ink. The title describes this piece perfectly. Salome Pereira Mages oil painting, relaxing, is a copy from Old Masters. This is a lovely painting, and Salome has done a wonderful job creating this piece. Another new exhibitor is Maya Zabian. Her acrylic painting is titled Breeze. This abstract has a lot of detail and feeling. This was painted for her dad, who she wrote she loves dearly. Richard J. Lerman's second painting in our show is In Paradise Two. Richard says of his work, all I would say is that the paintings are acrylics on canvas and I would never tell a viewer of my works what to think or understand about them. I prefer to allow each to bring their own experience and interpretations to them and make of them what best fits their beliefs, experiences, and feelings. Chris Long's uniquely crafted piece in our exhibit is called Pulpo Loco or Crazy Octopus Chris joins the list of our new exhibitors this year. After wielding a chainsaw for years fighting wildfires, it was only natural for him to turn to carving. And so we have this wonderful little side table with this very unique crazy octopus. We have a second table created by Chris Long with his chainsaw. This one is Happy Hawksbill, a very interesting creature. The hawksbill sea turtle is a critically endangered sea turtle that lives 50 to 60 years. Chris's turtle should survive even longer. In his painting, So It Begins, Brandon Boulay, artist and art teacher, makes a commentary on the time we've been through and still going on during the show in this piece. The mask changed everything for us in many ways. It's interesting to note that many of the artists have specifically noted that their work was done during the pandemic. Brandon Boulay's second piece is titled D plus 4B Yields. This purple rose and title is left to the viewer to interpret. The selection of the colors in the painting imparts a different feeling and mood. Joan L. Davidson's first painting in this show is an oil titled Doorway to the Dominican Republic. This beautiful painting is inspired by the lushness and diversity Joan observed. We are welcome into this magical place and Joan invites the viewer to feel through the color and content the wonders of nature. Joan is an award-winning artist and has exhibited in many galleries and museums. We welcome another new artist to our show and new member of the community, Bruce Laird. Bruce's painting, done in acrylics and marker on paper, is titled Walking Through 2020. You need to look carefully to see the images walking, and the complicated background is probably indicative of the complications we are all going through. This painting deserves close attention to see all the details. Upheaval is the title of our next painting by Mario Calori. This painting is intended to stand as a symbol of so many places in the world that are experiencing war and destruction, both man-made and natural. The colors and shapes in this abstract give us those feelings. It's interesting to compare this painting with Mario's other painting and look carefully how he creates these feelings by his placement of shapes and colors. Our second work from Bruce Laird is a large, bold work in acrylics titled Mother and Child Reunion. For me, this painting really captures the joy of the mother and the look the child gives you, that pout and refusal to look up and even smile. This painting makes me smile because I remember that look from children and the efforts to try to make the child smile. Bruce has captured this timeless moment. Thomas Rubino's second painting is titled Bull. This painting uses bright, bold acrylics to present the strength of the animal and movement. Tom was also inspired from a trip to Spain to paint this scene. 
Cindy Packard created Buttercup for her second piece. This is a mixed media work created with tissue paper, inks, cheesecloth, and an old Country Curtains catalog used primarily on the face of Buttercup to create this wonderful image. Our next artist has a distinctive style, and so if you've seen his work either in the library or in his home, you will know that this artist is Wayne Taylor. The first painting is Blonde too, with the distinctive eyes, pouty mouth, and that expression found in his pop art paintings. Wayne Taylor's second painting is also a pop art painting, Blonde One. This art movement, which started in the late 1950s, presented a challenge to traditions of fine art by including imagery from popular and mass culture, such as advertising, comic books, and mundane mass-produced objects. Diane Westpizer has created a beautiful wall hanging titled Botanical. Botanical is an improvisationally piece quilt started at a workshop with Irene Roderick. The quilt starts without a final plan and is formalized and created one black block at a time in response to the previous block. The result is this spectacular piece with quilting that follows the leaves and gives them greater dimension. Joan Davidson's beautiful painting is titled The Kiss and is painted in oil. Joan's paintings are a response to the joy and times of her life. The kiss is reflecting the love and joy of the bride and groom that they have for each other and that Joan has for them. The bride is her daughter. We now come to a special section in our show called The Kids Corner. The first piece was painted by Christopher Smith at age eight. This was painted at home with Michelle the painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip during 2020. This charming snowman is very inviting to see in the snow. Colton Smith painted his snowman when he was six. This was also done with Michelle the painter at Berkshire Paint and Sip during 2020. This snowman looks like he is contending with a snowier day and he's very ready for it. Galarmi Gunlavis, age nine, is entering his first piece in, into creatively. This is the little red house painted in acrylics. Galarmi loves to do artwork and this is a wonderful piece. Declan Boulay, also nine, has painted Colors of a Mother's Heart. Declan likes painting with his dad, Brandon Boulay, and has created this painting with lots of depth and emotion. The second painting from Galarmi Gunlovs is his work title, Colors, also done in acrylics. Galarmi likes experimenting with colors, and this was the result. Colton Smith's second painting is an abstract. Colton, now seven, did this painting while spending time with his brother at auntie's. And the last item in our show is Christopher Smith's abstract, also done at auntie's. This painting has drawn lots of discussion as to the images that are seen in this abstract. Both Christopher and Colton had a wonderful time at Auntie's creating these paintings. I hope you have enjoyed our show. And I want to make, give special thanks to CTSB for making this tour possible and to the board of the Lee Library Association. And a very special thank you again to all our wonderful artists. Mm -hmm.